I give you a two-step process framework, ubiquitous tool to stop chasing leads, get rid of the anxiety, and basically go from having to constantly fish to get fishes to jump in your boat. I break it down. This is a strategic how episode because I do give you hows. And for everybody who says I don't, you're out of your mind. I talk about that in this episode. And I'm telling you, you can apply it anywhere to your DMs, to your sales process, to your lead process. And these are reminders that are very current and very seasonal right now to what everybody is feeling. I promise you, this is a listen, implement, listen, implement, listen, implement. It is another one of those. We're going to be dropping those because it's about building bricks in your vision. And this is the work. And so I promise you, this one is good. This one will get fishes jumping in your bucket. So without further ado, I'm going to stop bumping my gums and let's get into the episode. All right, in this episode, I'm going to give you a two-step process to stop chasing leads and get rid of the anxiety, the overwhelm. And may not eradicate it completely, but it will give you the workout that will be the reminder of the basics that will plug the holes and make it last and stick around. And this conversation is timely. This is present for me, our team, people on my team, clients, friends, coaches of mine. It's a season right now. And I find that when the seasons get rough and the storms are here, sometimes we forget about or miss the basics and the basics are where the solutions are. And so it's never a problem to go back to them. And so that's what today is. And today is going to be kind of straight to the point, straight to the chase, uh, straight because I'm implementing the same thing and need these reminders. And every time I'm given them and I talk about them here, it reminds me and it has massive abundant results financially and my happiness and joy. And so it feels like a very pressing time and topic to talk about that on today's show. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and so just a couple of updates, the events coming up, I'm telling you, it's going to be magic. I've talked about in the previous episodes, get a ticket. If you haven't gotten a ticket, uh, mindofgeorge.com slash event. And then I still have not recorded that Bali episode, but we have it in the calendar to do in like a week from now. And so we will get that out soon because I am really, really excited to share. And then any other new news, Um, any other new news? Yeah, let's just cut to the chase. I basically realize entrepreneurs are my favorite people. And I love you if you have a company and products and you want to scale it and you have a heart, I'll help. But like, God, I love coaching people. And it felt so good to do that retreat in Bali uh, with all those incredible women. Uh, And then recently, and so... I'm going to open the door because I don't talk about this enough, but if I can help you with anything, if I can support you in any way, please reach out to me. It doesn't mean you have to hire me for coaching. I mean it. But uh, if that door feels called for you to open, open it, uh, no matter what it is, whether you're interested in coaching or not, or if I can help, uh, it's my favorite thing. gives me a purpose every day and really why I love doing what I do. And so I just want to open that door. So now let's get back into the weeds and I'm going to give you a how. And I want to hit this too. So many people think I'm like anti-how. No, I'm not. I actually love giving you the hows, but I only give them to you when I'm guaranteeing that they'll stick and I know what makes them stick. And so we have rules at the event where I'm like, don't ask me how or I'll kick you in the shins. And then people forget that the whole point of the event is that at the end you get the how and it applies everywhere that you keep it forever because I know what makes it stick. And so this is one of those episodes where I'm telling you it's a how and I do give you the how. So if you have that objection out there, I actually do give you the how when I coach you and I do give the how in customer journey and I do give you the how when I consult you. But before I give you the tool, I teach you how to use the tool, why the tool matters, where it applies. And then when you learn how to use it, you're like, holy shit, I'm going to use this forever. I'm like, yeah, I know. Now that's how you answer how, right? So this episode is something that will give you a how, but something that foundationally you should focus on no matter what. So We're going to talk about how to stop chasing leads and simplify your approach, which is like a simple two-step way, framework, easy way to think about when it comes to framing and leadership, right? And so a lot of people are literally currently facing the ongoing struggle of chasing leads, not being able to use ads anymore, uh, not converting, ad costs going through the roof, losing money where they used to gain it. Uh, And these whole lot of pressure and constraint being created and it's draining a lot of people's time, energy, resources, and not to mention the overwhelming noise, for lack of better terms, basically fogs the lens and almost forces a focus on all the shit that's going wrong 
which then gets in the way of focusing on all the things that we still have to do every day that will prevent it from getting worse and sometimes even mitigate it, right? And sometimes it releases dopamine. Sometimes our brain just gets stuck in our own hamster wheel, for lack of better terms, and you can't read the label from inside the bottle. Um, sometimes we're doing it because we have a new emotion. Sometimes it feels like the best option. And it just requires some pattern interrupts and for lack of better terms, becoming a triage nurse and assessing your situation and going, but it's happening everywhere, right? And so why do people chase leads? Well, lots of reasons. I want to scale my business. Uh, it's dopamine chasing from a mindset approach, right? It's never enough. There's always more, 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 more money to be had. The finish line moves. Who cares? It can even be done from a good perspective. But here's the secret about business. You can chase them as long as you want. But if all you do is chase people, you're never going to have time, money, and energy. And if you're chasing people and no one's sticking around, and that's why you're chasing more of them, there's a bigger problem to solve, right? So eventually you'll learn the lesson and you kind of focus on what matters, right? But either way, the why doesn't matter. And I'm not going to get into the mindset of like why we chase and how to break it or how to do that. And I've talked about it a ton already, but it leaves us feeling burnt out, depleted. Then we get resistant. We get reactant. I know for me when it happens, like I can tell when I'm like driving to the office and I'm like dreading recording, like I'm depleted because I'm out somewhere. <laughs> I was chasing something or putting expectations out without telling people and then being disappointed. And it was all on me, right? So it's almost like a barometer for me now. Uh, but I still follow the same steps and, and I follow the same steps magically and religiously, right? So let's talk about like how to really stop chasing leads and just ensure that when we have it right we understand the number one goal that we're really monetizing in the world is attention and that doesn't mean it has a dollar sign but you need somebody's attention i.e them looking at you or paying attention to you in order to help them for them to feel safe to pursue or lean into a relationship whether it's following you engaging with you hiring you consuming your content right but something has to get their attention and then something has to give them evidence that that attention was worth looking and give them evidence to spend more time looking and then collect more evidence that says, oh, I want to go actively pursue this, right? That's what's really, really happening. But yet in the world of marketing and business that we see now that everybody's so convinced there's a fucking easy button, right? Or it just somehow there's a magic set it and forget it. Uh, there's not. And so there's this whole lot of getting people's attention and then doing nothing with it. And one of the things I used to say that I stopped saying, and I don't know why, but I just realized is that uh, attention without a next step is a liability, right? And what I mean by that is that people get people's attention, but don't actually lead the relationship or do anything and then end up having to chase them and chase them without realizing that the chasing is actually decreasing the odds of their conversion and their goal because the reactance is going up, which is from the book, uh, The Catalyst, that I talk about all the time with Jonah Berger, right? So it just comes down to simple, simple solutions and understanding what we're doing is like every time we meet a person and we have their attention, we have the ability to lead that relationship and lead them one step closer to their goal, right? And so we kind of always have to do that. So when you're thinking about this in the lens of customer journey, what are the two steps? Number one is both of you have to agree upon a follow-up plan in advance, right? Like you have to set the expectation in a relationship, you're either leading or following. And if you're not leading, guess what? Somebody else is. So for me, especially in the lens of leads and business, you're the authority. You should be leading. You're the one that has the path. You're the one they're going to pay for the path. You're the one that has to show the path and say, hey, there's 30 steps. Here's your first one. So you, you kind of have to do it everywhere. You have to do it in communication. You have to do it in DM. You have to do it in text. You have to do it in video. You kind of have to constantly paint the picture of the next step and hold that space, right? So this could be as simple as asking a potential client like, hey, when would you like me to follow up and incorporating that from a permission or saying, hey, like I love this and I'd love to schedule a follow-up on call and I would love to schedule it as soon as possible. Do you have any time today or tomorrow, which would be ideal for me? And they're like, oh my God, that would be great. Or no, it would feel better if I did it in five days. I'm like, amazing. Five days would feel great too, right? You just agree on something. So that way both parties are like, hey, we're on the same field. We're in the same game. We're agreeing to the same rules of engagement, right? And then when that happens, it also manages and set expectations, which also closes the mistakes of the customer journey. Number one being the zone of doubt. Number two being the inverse journey, because that entire experience is about that person. And it doesn't matter if that's happening 
with a lead or if it's happening with an Instagram DM or a question or anything like that. It's just framing what the relationship or what the field looks like that you guys are engaging in. And then no matter what, once you're given that permission, you're both agreeing. And if there's any resistance, you can handle it then. But then you get to then release that knowing that you set up that time or set up that thing five days from now and you have to respect that boundary and container, not them. If they choose to lean back in, that's a benefit for you, but you have to hold that line for you. And then what you do is you take that space and then go focus up, you know, with anything else. And so then you set that container and then step two is follow up with a personalized response that isn't pushy, right? And so in any frame of this, let's say somebody DMs you on Instagram, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to answer your question. I'll get back to you within the next 24 hours. That's agreeing. They're like, oh my God, amazing. Thanks for responding. Thanks for letting me know. I can't wait to hear your response or a lead or a conversion or a client or even a coaching client. When you're like, hey, I got your text. I'm on a plane. I'm going to be in the air for the next six hours. But as soon as I get to the hotel and get on the Wi-Fi, I will respond and listen to your message. Blank. That will be in about 12 hours, right? And then you set the container like, holy moly, thanks for seeing me, right? You agree. And then no matter what it is, Step two is follow up with a personalized response that isn't pushy, but then continues to lead the relationship step by step, which is by not creating mistake number three, which is the drown the journey, which is overwhelming people. And so nobody wants to receive a message that says, hey, following up or remember me or, uh, hey, it's our thing, right? Especially if it's a DM, a text, a call, right? Any of that. And uh, I'll hit this in a minute, but I'll say it out loud. The, the modality you choose has to match a few things, Okay. And so think about opening a conversation and what that looks like. It's really about being able to follow the five steps of the customer journey, which I'm going to hit and role play for you in a minute. But when you go through them as principles and you include these things, it kind of manages the entire relationship, sets a positive frame, handles the leadership, the authority, literally lays out the next steps, clear communication, creates pure, no codependent, like independent relationships where both parties are clear. Like you can't lose the game. And for some reason I teach it to everybody and then they finally get it and do it. And they're like, oh, I wish I did this sooner. So just do it now, right? So you you have to understand that you're constantly in a relationship. So you agree, step number one on a follow-up plan in advance, right? I gave you an Instagram example. I gave you a lead example, right? If you're following up with somebody and you're like, hey, I'll follow up with you on Facebook in four days, right? When you follow up, then you choose now, step two, how you follow up, but make it memorable, make it stand out. This is the book, Get Different by Mike Michalowicz, or just you being unique and being you and being your style, right? And so let's hit the five steps. You follow up and you acknowledge them, you prepare them, you pre-handle, you project and you excite, but you're really only doing that until the next step or the next milestone, right? And so acknowledge them. What was the last interaction you had and something they shared about where they were at that you can use to anchor in the previous conversation, right? Prepare, share with them the intention of your message is to follow up. Hey, I'm sending you this message because I wanted to follow up on our call and I'm really excited. Three, pre-handle. If there was a specific objection as to why they were on the fence, remind them of how you addressed it. Or if you are thinking of any, and I'll give you an example of this in a minute. Four, project, right? Share what you see in your partnership collaboration of working together that benefits them. Like, what are they going to achieve? What's their after state? What's their next step, right? Excite is kind of share your excitement for what's coming. Like, hey, we're prepped, so now we can go, right? And um, when you think about this, you then have mediums and modalities that might match your process, right? Like if you're DMing people on Facebook back and forth with text, you might prefer text, but I might say, hey, if you do this in an audio or do this in a video, it might even be more of a pattern interrupt, right? But you have to match the medium and modality that matches, number one, your personality and should stretch you a little bit, but also matches the avatar and the clientele. And, and I realize there's certain clientele of mine that don't like video messages because it interrupts their day and they can't stop what they're doing running a $100 million company in the middle of the day to hit play for a two-minute video message for me. And then they're funny because I've learned this and they're like, no, I love your video messages. Send them to me after work or send me non-work stuff because I watch them after work and I love that you fill my bucket. And so if I need something during the day, I know to text them. I match the median, the medium or the modality to match the relationship and what I'm trying to achieve, right? But you hit these five steps and let's just have a random example and I'll use me for an example. People DM us 
for customer journey training all the time. And we prefer to manually send this back to them. And so if I'm doing it and I'm traveling or I'm in the middle of something and I see like four of them, I'll literally open my thing real quick and be like, hey, thank you so much for asking me about customer journey. I'm traveling through the airport and I want to send you a few specific things. And so when I land, I'll send them in the next 24 hours and I'll explain it more and I'll send that. And then when I land 24 hours later or whatever, I get to my hotel room and I bang them all out really, really quickly. And then I hit these five steps and I'm like, Hey Jane, thanks for being patient with me. And thanks for DMing me for customer journey. Like I acknowledge her for DMing me. I acknowledge her for asking for customer journey. And I'm like, I'm so stoked to send this. I wanted to wait because what I'm sending is like a five part video series with a Google doc that goes with it. And I'm telling you, that if you do it in completion and do the work, it makes me and you working together so easy and you're gonna be bananas when you implement it, right? So I pre-handled like, hey, it's eight steps. I wanted to take a minute to tell you, right? Hey, you're gonna wanna watch it all, right? Well, so no, I prepared her, sorry. Hey, it's eight steps, blah, blah, blah. And then I projected like, hey, when you watch and you implement it, it's gonna give me and you both more clarity. You're gonna be able to do this on repeat to your DMs or whatever I choose to say. And then I pre-handle like, oh yeah, and by the way, <laughs> it's eight videos and there's questions in each of them and it will only work if you write them down and start to put them in that document I called the Bible that I talked about. So write them down because if you DM me, I'll answer your questions, but if you didn't do the homework, I can't. And so after this, here's the link to the video so you have everything you need. So watch it and if it works and it lands, probably best to come to my event, but if not, let me know how I can help you. And so very quickly, the first step was, I agreed upon a follow-up plan and then I kept it, which creates safety, integrity, and honesty. And then I very congruently followed up and that customer journey training that I do uh, should be $397, uh, but it's free. And so like, I genuinely believe it adds so much value to somebody's life. So I'm like, hey, thanks for asking for it. You're in the right place. Here's the right thing. Hey, it's eight videos. You can do it as fast as you want, but it takes most people like two days, right? Do it bite by bite, implement it as you see it, and it'll make this easier, this easier, and this easier. Oh, and yes, you do have to watch all the videos for it all to make sense. Now that you have everything you need, you're ready to go. And when you're done, if you want next steps, like we'd love to have you at our event. Your energy's great. It's boom, 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 and it'll help you apply this, this, this. Or if I can answer any questions, let me know, right? And there's always a next step or an open door, and that creates that solution. So you can apply this at any level to any lens of any follow-up with people you meet after a keynote, uh, people that you are getting interviewed on a podcast and the podcast is like, hey, where can I find, where can they find you? Give them specific instructions. And I do this. I'm like, hey, I would love to support you. And I'm going to make this easy because none of you are going to DM me and only about 20 of you are. And we get a lot of DMs. So just DM me this word and I will text you a training for free that I don't give anyone else for free. And then I wait and they all DM me the word and I send them a training that I've never sent out publicly for four and I ask them not to share it and I'm not going to do it again. But then as long as anybody DMs me that word, we know the word and we send it out. And so I tell them on the podcast and then I manage it. And then the moment they DM me, I respond and I hit those five steps. I'm like, hey man, like kudos. This tells me a lot about you as an entrepreneur because you literally of the millions of people that heard that are literally one of probably 40 or 50. And I tell them the real number that I got in that moment. And so I know you're going to win and I'm just excited to have you in my ecosystem. And here's the training I talked about. It's a 45 minute trading. And for context, it was in my mastermind, but it will make sense to you. But please don't share this with anybody. Everybody agreed to have it shared, but I can't have you sharing it. When you're done watching this, you'll be able to do this and this. I'm pretty sure if you need anything, let me know. But now you have everything you need. So go watch it. And if you want me to help you apply this personally, we can schedule a consult or you can come to the event and it's the same thing. And so those are two really tangible examples that you can apply either way that starts to put you in the confident driver's seat that also allows you to realize that if you don't have people knocking at the door or fish jumping in the bucket, then it's time to get pro proactive and then go start creating those conversations and adding those values and creating those relationships where then you have the ability to agree to follow up to help them with something, even if it's a small coaching thing or a book recommendation or a habit change or agreeing to give them an hour of your time because you actually think you can help them and then you help them and they're like, holy moly, I want to hire you as a coach. Whatever you choose to do, you can apply it anywhere. And so these are two very clear, and I mean follow every single time, principal steps, ubiquitous things that apply anywhere, and then apply these with the customer journey books like 
the catalyst, which is what gets in the way and why these things matter, and the contagious, what makes people think and share, the episode prior to this one uh, on customer excellence and service, and then Get Different by Mike Michalowicz with these, you're game over. It's bananas. You get to go paint the biggest picture of the biggest canvas of whatever you'd like in your life. And so that's what we got today. And so that's what I'm going to leave you with. Uh, I appreciate it immensely. Um, I do have one question is um, when talking about earlier, I was talking about the mindset piece of how uh, when it comes to like the chasing and dopamine, um, I was initially going to um, offer to record a podcast on that one, but I can answer it very, very quickly. And so just go pick up any Benjamin Hardy book and start there and read his whole catalog. But like personality is impermanent. Um, be your future self now. Uh, 10x is better than 2x. Uh, basically, those books eradicate all of it and give you the evidence to make it go away and flex that muscle. So I wanted to add that note as to the earlier part of this show where I was talking about why we chase the leads and we're constantly having that anxiety. And so that's what I have for you today. I need to go drink some water. So remember that relationships will always be the algorithms, especially the one with yourself. I will either see you in the next episode or you will hear me in your earballs. But either way, we're out.